Peter Maguire now joins in with his views on all the global action. Peter, it's a big day and you can see every asset class is trading on the sideline, cautious trade. And a lot of analysts are now talking about the fact that uh, it was a buy on election and a sell on inauguration with regard to the Trump rally. Well, good morning, Samina. You know, it's been an amazing two and a bit months and you would have to agree to some extent that it's been a very, very much a one-way trip for equities. We've seen what happened with the commodity side of things. Um, the gold market was sold off heavily. It went all the way to 1330 to 1140, 11.30, and back above 1200. So it's been an incredibly volatile eight or nine weeks. And uh, let's just see where next week is. It's going to be fascinating with the US dollar and, of course, the, after the inauguration. So it's an exciting time to be a trader. Exciting time to be a trade, and I guess volatility is your best friend. But Peter, talk about the dollar. Mixed commentary coming in. So be it Trump or be it his Treasury Secretary nominee, both indicating that the dollar is very, very strong in so many words. Yellen, on the other hand, saying that there are risk if interest rates uh, hikes are left to too late. What are you making of this mixed signals coming in the dollar? How does one approach the USD right now? Well, exactly right. I think one way trip is the best part of of years now, um, every look at you know, commodity currencies, the Aussie dollar, the Canadian loonie, um, they've been happy to the downside. Have a look where the US, pardon me, the uh, UK pound is. So US dollar has been, as we all understand, very strong, continues to tick, and it's been, you know, just a dramatic one-way trip. Now the other side, of course, is what happens with Yellen. Her, um, what's her movements in 2017 after three or four rate rises? What's going to happen with Trump as far as manufacturing, the strength of US dollar, what impact that's going to have to his master plan for making America great again? And I think that um, that creates uncertainty. And so many traders are uh, sceptical. Some are saying, well, look, the it's probably really at full time high. It's not going to travel much further. And there's other yeah, with your audio. Peter, I'm having some trouble with your audio. Just give us a minute. We'll try and connect back to you and continue our conversation. Uh, that was, of course, Peter Maguire clearly discussing that it is exciting times for traders. Volatility is a trader's best friend. And that's pretty much what the markets have been getting up to in the last couple of weeks. And we'll continue to remain volatile. All eyes on whether or not Trump and his team can see through the pro-growth policies that they've been harping about in the first uh, half of his election. So that's going to be the key trigger. The dollar, of course, uh, swinging uh, from gains to losses on back of mixed commentary coming in from Trump's administration. And Yellen, on the other hand, who indicates that a rate hike should be around the corner and of course uh, very clearly stating not mincing her words that taking too much time or dealing an interest rate high could have repercussions on the u.s economy economic data from the u.s has been much better than anticipated so you had uh, unemployment claims falling more than expected and the philadelphia manufacturing index also rose surprisingly in the month of jan i believe we've got peter back peter you were talking about uh, the dollar and of course the big swings that the greenback is expected to see well, exactly right. Everyone's got a mixed view. I've got many traders that are saying that we're going to see a continued uptick due to Yellen, the uncertainty as far as bond yields, what's happening as, uh, to uh, the, the poorer performing economies. Are we going to see a continued softness across Eurozone? So there are so many mixtures into the pie. And in some ways, I feel as though that the Trump administration are really capturing everyone and they're further along the road than anyone else that's playing. And that's where... The, the uncertainty is going to be 2017, much more volatility, I think, in currency markets. Peter, I want to talk about crude because uh, there are some voices out there who believe that uh, crude prices are peaking out now. We also had data coming in a few days ago where U.S. shale gas output is actually expected to increase substantially from the start of Feb. What are you doing with that? And there's, of course, political uncertainty, not in the U.S. alone, but in the Eurozone as well. Number of countries going to election year. You've got the U.K. working off its way from, from the Eurozone. And, of course, oversupply of oil. Well, exactly. You know, and we understand that, you know, the shale, um, as far as recount, is increasing with Baker Hughes. We've had 10 out of the last 11 weeks uh, more rigs coming online new technologies, and, of course, that their um, extraction costs, that they're saying, are down now in the low $40. So 
more more of these workers are coming back, we expect to see further ramp up as far as production coming out of that area in the States, which I think is going to cause some uncertainty as far as what happens with the OPEC, non-OPEC uh, um, producers and what they're prepared to do over those next couple of months as far as cutting production. So that, again, creates more uncertainty from a trader's perspective and, of course, to these large producers. So, uh, again, 17 is going to be a fascinating year how it plays out. Peter, but yeah, while you have uh, you know, concerns over whether or not OPEC and non-OPEC members will cut supply, I think the bigger problem that we could be facing is that a lot of the production that's in the pipeline is going to come live, and that could be a concern. And a lot of those bankrupt U.S. drillers are actually going out there and producing oil once again. So my concern is there's a structural oversupply in the system. Do you agree? Well, in some ways, yes. I think that will continue. And as, the, as those OPEC and non-OPEC producers that signed to say that they're going to cut production, that's going to play very favourably for the U.S. shale producers. And I think that that's going to be the trade-off. So while some are cutting production in Russia for likes of, you know, three or 400,000 barrels a day, you're going to see far greater capacity and production coming out of that U.S. side. So that, again, is a... Uh, the, 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 there has never been, I think, a more volatile time for, for energy. And you look at the likes of Kashagan, which is supposedly going to come online in 17 or 18, and then the Saudi Aramco IPO. So, again, you know, what's happening as far as finance, capital expenditure, all of these factors that have got to be taken on board across that whole commodity sector.